I've gotten plenty of requests over the course of my channel to build out Avatar The Last Airbender or from Legend of Korra. I used to absolutely love this show, so let's just go ahead and dive into it, because this is D&D Builds where we have an outlet to make all sorts of ridiculous Dungeons and Dragons characters and stop driving the people in our lives insane with them. We are going to be building the Avatar themselves, and not some normal airbender or firebender or waterbender or earthbender or anything like that. So when we pick a race, we need to pick something a little bit above a normal human. So instead of going with a human like we might do with any sort of normal bender, the avatar being more closely tied to the spirit realm makes me think of an awesome R. When you choose this race, you get Celestial Resistance, giving you resistance to necrotic and radiant damage, and you get Healing Hands, so you can do some healing just by default. And then finally, you get the Light Bearer feature, giving you the cantrip Light. Additionally, when you choose this race, you get to choose a sub race. And since you're supposed to be kind of a protector of the spirit world, as well as the people themselves, we're going to go with Protector Asamar. This gives us a feature called Radiant Soul. So starting at third level, you can use your action to unleash divine energy within yourself, causing your eyes to glimmer and you transform for one minute. During that time, you have a flying speed of 30 feet and once on each of your turns, you can deal extra radiant damage to one target you deal any sort of damage to with a physical or spell attack. And that radiant damage is equal to your level. Then when it comes to a background, I think the most fitting one is going to be Folk Hero, because the description of this background explicitly states you are destined for so much more than just a humble social rank. This gives us skill proficiency in animal handling and survival, and then we get to jump into some stats. But speaking of stats, if you want to improve your own stats and not just that of your D&D character, you can do that thanks to today's sponsor, Future. Don't you just love smooth transitions? I'm a little proud of that one, I'm not gonna lie. Future is actually pretty awesome. They're a fitness app that is all about helping you improve yourself. I know personally, I kind of hate going to the gym. One, I have to leave my house. Two, I have to deal with sweaty machines that people have not wiped down and it's super gross. And three, there's constantly weights that people haven't put back and it's super infuriating to me. And four, if I wanna get a personal training session, it's super expensive. I have to pay per hour and it can cost upwards of $100 per hour for a single session. But I can avoid all of that with the Future Fitness app because you get a one-on-one -on -one personal session with a trainer from Future. They customize a fitness routine for exactly what you need and they do it with what you have available. So if you have just a stick of matches and a random chair in the corner, well, they'll MacGyver together some sort of fitness routine for you. They'll even record positive messages to help encourage you along your way. And on top of all of that, if you sign up using my link down below, you'll get your first month with a future trainer for only $19, which is an insanely massive discount when you think of all of the costs that would go into a gym and a trainer and all of that stuff. Stuff. So if you want to lose weight, just feel better, or if you want to go out and be an adventurer of your own and not just in D&D, you can start working towards that goal. So visit my sponsor Future at tryfuture.co slash dndbuilds and you'll get that massive discount at $19 for the first month and start getting ready to completely obliterate your fitness goals. But now, back to the build. Most of the time, using martial arts requires a lot of dexterity, so we're just gonna try to optimize a tiny bit since we're doing a bit more of a generic avatar build and not necessarily Aang or Korra or any of their random ancestors. So we're gonna max out our dexterity, max out our constitution, and max out our wisdom, bringing all of them to 15. That leaves our strength, intelligence, and charisma all dumped down to eight. Then we have three points available that we can allocate however we want, thanks to Tasha's, from being an awesome R. So we're gonna put one point into Dexterity, Constitution, and Wisdom, bringing each of them to 16. Then when it comes to a starting class, it should be absolutely no surprise, since most of this show revolves around martial arts, that we're just gonna go with a monk. Right when you start being a monk, you get proficiency with simple weapons and short swords, you get saving throws and strength and dexterity, and you get to choose two 
skills, so we're gonna go with acrobatics and insight. When you choose monk at first level, you get access to unarmored defense. So your armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier plus your wisdom modifier, currently setting it at 16. Then you get access to martial arts. So you can use dexterity instead of strength for any attack or damage rolls for your unarmed strikes or any attacks with a monk weapon. Additionally, with martial arts, you deal a d4 in place of any unarmed strike damage, but that dice upgrades as you level up in this class. And then finally, when you take the attack action on your turn, you get one free attack with an unarmed strike as your bonus action by default. Then at second level of monk, you get access to ki, which is kind of like just the energy that courses throughout your body. You can use this for special monk stuff, but the basic things you can use it for are flurry of blows. So instead of just getting one free attack as your bonus action, you can spend one key point to get two attacks as your bonus action. You can also get patient defense by spending one key point to take the dodge action as a bonus action. And you can use step of the wind, spending one key point to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action and your jump distance is doubled for the turn. And finally, at second level, you get unarmored movement. So your speed is increased by 10 feet when you're not wearing any armor or a shield. Then at third level of bunk, you get access to a monastic tradition. And I was almost surprised this was requested so much because there's such an obvious subclass to choose here that it's just hard to avoid. And that's the way of the four elements. You get to learn a special type of elemental ability called elemental disciplines. Some of these actually recreate casting a spell and you can use key points to actually upgrade that spell at certain points in this class. You only get to know two disciplines at first and one of them has to be something called elemental attunement, but you learn more disciplines as you level up in the subclass. That elemental attunement gives you brief control over elemental forces within 30 feet of you. So you can create a harmless, instantaneous sensory effect with air, earth, fire, or water, like a shower of sparks, or a puff of wind, or spraying a little light mist, or even a gentle rumbling of stone. You can also instantaneously light or snuff out a candle or torch, chill or warm up one pound of non-living material, or cause earth, fire, water, or mist that can fit within a one-foot cube to shape itself into a crude form you designate for one minute. Then, as far as the first discipline I would grab, I was definitely a huge fan of the original Avatar The Last Airbender, so we're gonna go with that to guide our way and grab the discipline Fist of Unbroken Air. So you can spend two key points to choose a creature within 30 feet of you, and that creature has to make a strength saving throw, and on a failed save, they take 3d10 bludgeoning damage plus an extra 1d10 bludgeoning damage for each additional key point that you spend. And you push that creature up to 20 feet away from you and knock it prone. On a successful save, that creature takes half as much damage and you don't push it or knock it prone, but you're still doing damage either way. Then additionally, at third level of monk, you get access to deflect missiles, so you can block projectiles or even possibly catch them and throw them back at your enemy. Then at fourth level of monk, you get an ability score improvement, so we're gonna boost up our dexterity by two points, and you get access to slow fall, reducing any damage you would take from a straight up plummet to the earth. At fifth level of monk, you get access to the all-important extra attack. So you can attack twice on your action and once as your bonus action or twice on your bonus action if you use Flurry of Blows. Additionally, you get access to Stunning Strike, which is kind of the bread and butter of being a monk. So you can stun your enemy by hitting them in just the right spots. And finally, at fifth level of monk, your unarmed strikes or your martial arts die get upgraded from a 1d4 to a 1d6. Then at sixth level of monk, you get key empowered strikes. So your unarmed strikes actually count as magical. The movement bonus you get from unarmored movement gets bumped up from 10 feet to 15 feet, and you get to choose one more elemental discipline. The second element that Aang got to master was water. So there's two good water related disciplines that we have the ability to focus on. We can go with water whip, but that is unreasonably similar to the one we already got from our wind specialization. So we're gonna grab the elemental discipline, clench of the north wind. This allows you to spend three key points to cast old person. And while this does have wind in the name, there's so many instances of water bending when you freeze somebody in place. So 
hold person is the best way to replicate that. Then at 7th level of monk, you get access to evasion. So whenever you have to make a dexterity saving throw to avoid taking damage, you automatically take half damage, and if you succeed on that saving throw, you take zero damage. Then you also get stillness of mind, so you can use an action to end either a frightened or charmed effect on you. Then at 8th level of monk, you get another ability score improvement, so we're going to go ahead and boost up our wisdom, because that's going to help any of the special abilities that we use with our bending. Then at 9th level of monk, you get a bonus to your unarmored movement, so now you can actually run across water or up vertical surfaces. And then at 10th level of monk, your unarmored movement gets boosted again, going from a bonus 15 feet to 20 feet, and you get the feature Purity of Body, making you completely immune to disease and poison. Then at 11th level of monk, your martial arts die gets upgraded from a 1d6 to a 1d8, and you get to choose another discipline. At this point, Aang had learned some earthbending, so, as far as earth bending abilities that we can choose, there's none, because all of the actual earth bending that we would have an option to do as part of this subclass requires you to be 17th level. So, we're gonna have to skip ahead to some fire bending, and there's actually tons of good choices with sweeping cinder strikes, giving us the ability to essentially just cast burning hands, or fangs of the fire snake, so you can just strike out with flaming tendrils. But there's never a way I can avoid grabbing flames of the phoenix which allows us to cast the infamous Fireball. And since we're already choosing an elemental discipline, we actually have the ability to swap out another one, so I'm actually going to swap out our airbending, because there's plenty of times that Aang is just kind of riding around on his glider thing, so we're going to swap Fist of Unbroken Air and grab Ride the Wind, allowing us to cast Fly but only targeting ourselves. Then at 12th level, we get another ability score improvement, so we're gonna go ahead and boost up our dexterity, maxing it out, and bringing it to 20. Then at 13th level of monk, you get tongue of the sun and moon, so you can speak and understand pretty much all languages. And then at 14th level of monk, your unarmored movement speed gets boosted from 20 feet to 25 feet, and you get diamond soul, giving you proficiency in all saving throws, which is pretty darn helpful to have. Then at 15th level of monk, you get timeless body so you can't be magically aged and then at 16th level of monk you get another ability score improvement so we're gonna go ahead and max out our wisdom bringing it to 20. then at 17th level of monk our martial arts die gets boosted from a d8 to a d10 and we get another discipline to choose from so we'll finally get some earth bending with wave of rolling earth allowing us to cast Wall of Stone. Then at 18th level of Monk, we get access to the feature Empty Body. So you can essentially turn invisible, which might not work as well for Avatar-like stuff, but if you go ahead and use your Asamar Radiant Soul ability, you'll be glowing at the same time, kind of negating it if you want to full-blown enter the Avatar state, because also when you activate Empty Body, which lasts one minute, you have resistance to all damage except for force damage. And the other notable feature of Empty Body is you can spend eight key points to cast Astral Projection. And that seems way too spot on to think about going with anything else for this 18th level. Then we could just keep going with Monk and that would be fine because we get one more ability score improvement, but we already have maxed out dexterity and wisdom, so I'm going to do a multi-class. I want a little bit of extra elemental bending, so we're going to go ahead and jump into Druid. This gives us some spell casting, and we get to utilize our wisdom for that spell casting, which is perfect because it's already maxed out. But with only two levels to spare, we're a little limited in what we can do. However, we're a little lucky because druids get to choose a druid circle, otherwise known as a subclass, right at second level. So while first level is going to grant us some spell casting and some cantrips, second level allows us to specialize a little further, so we're just going to grab the circle of land. This definitely focuses on elemental casting, and that's what we want with this build. Being a normal druid gives us two cantrips at this level, and we have three spell slots of first level. Being a circle of land druid does give us one additional cantrip that we get to to choose and we get the feature natural recovery so you can sit in meditation in nature during a short rest and you can recover one spell slot since you're only getting two levels in this class circle of land also does get to choose what land they're from whether it's the arctic or the coast which would be very helpful if we were focusing on one particular type of bending 
but that doesn't really kick in until third level and we don't get there anyways. Before we dive into any of the actual spells that we're going to learn, there's actually one more feature you get just from being a normal druid at second level. You also get the unique feature Wild Shape, where you can actually shapeshift into a type of beast, which doesn't really apply to this build too much, but they have an optional feature that you can use instead called Wild Companion. It allows you to cast the Find Familiar spell, and essentially you can summon Momo. Now that we've got everything else taken care of, let's just go ahead and dive into those spells. Since we do get three cantrips to choose from, thanks to our Druid Circle, we're going to grab Gust to get a little more airbending since we replaced it initially with Fly, Frostbite for a little bit more waterbending, and then just follow it up with Mold Earth for a little bit more earthbending. When it comes to actual first level spells that we get to learn, we can learn up to six seven because it's our wisdom modifier plus our druid level. So we'll go ahead and grab some earth bending with earth tremor. We can do some similar air bending with thunder wave because it blasts out a thunderous wave of force similar to what a blast of air would do. Then follow it up with some water bending with ice knife and some general defensive abilities against any sort of bending with absorb elements. Then we can use both jump and long strider similar to how air bending works and helping to push you along making you faster or jumping further in the air leaving us with one spell left and i'm gonna choose fairy fire the whole point of this spell is that it highlights your enemies and makes them glow and i couldn't help but think of the avatar state and how the avatar's eyes actually glow as well so to you maybe your enemies are highlighted similar to how fairy fire works that gives us all of our spells and brings us all the way up to 20th level with 18 levels in monk and two levels in druid i know this was a very straightforward build but it had been requested a bunch of times if you want access to the character sheet for this build or any of my other builds feel free to check out my patreon linked in the description down below where for this month only i'm actually adding a big discount for anybody that wants to sign up for an annual subscription so you can get 12 months for the price of 10. We'll We'll still have some other discounts going forward but this is going to be the largest discount that i ever plan to add and you'll be able to be just as awesome as all of these people especially bad in person caleb brone kilon omar c the dino 21 viral nerevar yaksha senpai and z13 and going above and beyond all of that is my dungeon master level patrons that i actually play DD with which i stream right here on youtube as well as over on twitch and the players in that game are benjamin brayden aldridge connor kitchen daniel galvin demiurge devin happy eric Eric Wade, Gamestake, Heyo, Kilo Kilo, Michael, Tristan Bennett, and Salvador. Let me know what you think about this build in the comments down below. If there's something you do differently, or if you're like, hey, this one was boring, it was way too straightforward, let me know down there as well. If there's any other builds you want to see in the future, there's plenty of space down in the comments. And finally, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know by hitting that like button, and I'll be here hoping you roll at least three nat 20s in your next D&D session, especially if you want to play as the Avatar in Dungeons & Dragons.